In chapter 16, you will continue your exploration of basic macroeconomic measures by exploring the notion of unemployment and how that is calculated, as well as uh, being introduced to the idea of the business cycle. This is a chapter that I think in today's world, um, especially because of the pandemic, um, it, it's very important for you to have a very clear understanding of unemployment. Um, unfortunately, the reality is uh, many of you either have or will in your lifetime face the issue of unemployment. Um, so this chapter will introduce you to that concept uh, as well as some of the implications of unemployment. So the first thing I'd like to talk about has to do with the idea of what's known as the business cycle. In this chapter, you will see that the business cycle is a, is a movement up and down of economic activity. Sometimes uh, the economy just seems to be doing really well, and sometimes the economy seems to really be struggling, uh, and that is the business cycle. So we'll explore what the business cycle is um, and how do we know what phase of the cycle we're actually operating in. So it is this regular uh, up and down cycle um, for the last several you know, 150 years, uh, we have noticed that the economy seems to grow and seems to decline. Um, when the economy is growing, that's called a recovery or an expansion. Those expansions will stop at a peak and then will enter into a decline of economic activity. And that's called a recession or a contraction. Um, the recession will end at what's called a trough. And after the trough, we enter into another expansion. So it's this up and down motion in uh, economic activity um, that we have observed for quite some time. This chapter will also introduce you to the idea of unemployment and what it is. Uh, by definition, it's the percent of the labor force that is unemployed but is seeking work. Um, that is a key component of calculating unemployment is that you're not only without work, but you're actually seeking work. So in this chapter, uh, pay attention to how the unemployment rate is calculated um, because uh, you will need to understand the idea of what the labor force is. The unemployment rate is calculated simply as the number of people who are unemployed and seeking work divided by those that are in what is known as the labor force. And you multiply it times 100 and you get a percent. Um, so unemployment is uh, reported in a percentage term. You will discover in this chapter, there are several reasons for unemployment. Um, one of them is perfectly normal kinds of unemployment. That's called frictional unemployment. With frictional unemployment, you actually have skills for available jobs. Um, you just have to be able to match your uh, skills with the available jobs. Structural unemployment is a little bit more serious. Because in structural unemployment, you do not have the skills for the available jobs. Um, and so typically that becomes uh, rather serious and very long lasting. And then there's the idea of what's known as cyclical unemployment. Cyclical unemployment has to do with unemployment that rises and falls as the business cycle rises and falls. And lastly, you'll discover the idea of what's known as full employment. Full employment is the level of economic activity that we would have when there is no cyclical unemployment. So we recognize that there might be frictional and structural unemployment, but full employment uh, is when we have no cyclical unemployment. At the level of full employment, we have a certain potential GDP that we might be able to produce. However, the reality is 
we might experience even higher levels of unemployment. And so there's a gap between what we're actually producing and what we could produce if we were at full employment. So you'll explore the idea of the GDP gap. And lastly, you'll begin to understand a little bit better about some of the effects of unemployment. Obviously, there are personal um, impacts. Uh, you lose your job, um, you lose your income. So obviously that has some personal impacts, but there are impacts upon the macroeconomy also when we have unemployment. And so you will begin to explore those uh, types of impacts on the macroeconomy as well. So in this chapter, you're going to understand the business cycle and make sure that you pay attention to the phases of the business cycle and how we actually know where we're at in the business cycle. And you'll also begin to understand unemployment, what it is, how it's calculated, and what are the impacts of unemployment?